Welcome. I'm back with another video about keys to text proxy. This one is about the code briefly anyway, at least something I can use in the future to remind myself uh, about what I worked on, which I'm very likely to forget. But um, so it's not going to be in depth on the Python and whatever else I'm including the libraries. But I am going to show the code here so I can get the screen up. Okay. And the first one we'll do is what we're calling main.py. And that's uh, hopefully up on this. No, it's not. Let me get these pictures out of the way. Ah, there we go. Okay, and I will try to zoom in some. They don't give me much to work with here. Nope, that's the best I can do. So we're going to start, and this is the GitHub. So if you go into the GitHub, there's a folder called Keys to Text Proxy, or there's a subfolder called Keys to Text Proxy, and that has a file called main. This is kind of set up to be your normal pip install kind of thing. So first we see all the various imports and froms to kind of make things more modular. So let's see. We start by importing the required modules. That's all this at the top. And dependencies. That's these at the top. Here's where the magic begins. We bring in fast API. That's right up here. And other essential libraries. So now we can move down the code and you'll see some things that kind of get explained better later. Like there's a timestamp and I'm setting up the one thing I wanted out of this whole project is a long running chat conversation history as a text file. So as next, we initialize constants and variables. All that's going on. Notice how a timestamp chat file is created right there. And a dictionary is set up to map from the providers. This is the possible providers. You may not have API keys for all these, but that's all the possibilities. And for each one of those, uh, a uh, provider can either stream the response or not stream the response, as in non-stream. You'd be sitting there waiting for it to do the entire thing and then it bursts it back at you. So let's see, where are we now? We just did that. These are utility functions uh, that handle the conversions and organize the models. They ensure our app is well prepared to process data seamlessly, which they do. Now, where are we? There's a magic little statement in here. Did I miss it already? Yeah, you see the uh, async context manager? That's kind of a newer way of running a fast API app. And it kind of helps with uh, closing it down, shutting it down, bringing it up, keeping the context around things. So where is the actual use of that? Huh. Well, that's a little bit of a puzzler. I guess it's not where I thought it would be. Hmm. Async. Oh, I see. So it's not that endpoint. It's this whole endpoint here called lifespan. That's the lifespan of this entire app. Because when you start it up, it first makes a text file with that little comment in it right there. And then it tries to go and get all the models it can from every single AI provider that's available for this. And then, um, okay, so we got past that one. What's next? Then somewhere down here, we set up the yeah, here we go. Fast API with that lifespan. And then the core's middleware, so we can handle the request from Novel Crafter or something like Novel Crafter. And 
then we get to the actual meat of all this, or there's two meats right here. One is to get a list of the models that's available. When a request comes in, it'll look up the provider. And if it's one you have a key for, it's going to get all the models that they can list. Only recently was Anthropic able to list models, which I find odd. But, uh, okay. So then a, 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 another kind of request will come in where you've, you're asking a question or you got some writing, you wanted to do something with it. That will come in here at this uh, post for chat completions is fancy word for what they call it. And in all of that, there will be uh, the appropriate API handler selected. There's the, a, we saw the imported handlers before, and then we got a mock handler just for testing. And then the handlers for Anthropic, Google, Gemini, Grok, OpenAI, oh, you know, GPT-4, O1, Open Router, which is like 200 different models. Olama, which is usually one or two. I think you can select from them. So that can be whatever you've got installed. LM Studio is usually one. DeepSeek is something I've added recently because it's kind of, it's not free, but it's cheap. So let's see, where are we now? We're at the point where we figured out which handler to call, and I'll show a handler here in a moment using this. And now we've got back a response and back up when it got the request in, it would know, is this a streaming response or just a JSON response? In other words, it's just a big answer and it came back all at once. So now finally here at the bottom, we can take in an argument, I think for the port. I can't imagine why you would have to change it, but maybe. And then we see how it's actually being run as a, a unicorn web server with fast API. And there's where the main app is, and the host is that, and the port is that. And the script, it begins at that point. And if you run this as a main module, the app kicks off, loading provider and model names based on your API keys. So that was that. Now let's look at it as a mermaid uh, flowchart. Now I'll make it bigger, as bigger as I think I can make it. And then we'll go down it. The same things we said before, it's loading modules and dependencies, constants and variables, utility functions. It uses this new lifespan manager for fast API. It's got the core so the browser can talk to this app. And then all your incoming requests hang out in here. Oh, let's go back. I made it too small. Can't click. Incoming request. And then that's where it decides, oh, this is just that thing to list models. So it goes this way, tries to get them, sends them back, back to you. Or in this case, back to Novel Crafter. Or somebody hits Control C and say, well, I'm done with this for a day. I'm going to go watch TV or something. So that's a shutdown. And then it will talk to itself for a little bit before it shuts down. But most of these, the majority of these requests are going to come in as a request for a chat completion, which is what they call chatting with it. And it'll parse the request and decide if it's streaming or not streaming. If it's streaming, which is most of them, then it'll do the completion by talking to the AI provider. But in the course of doing all that, it's going to both log the request and the response has text, and I remove the markdown. So it's just plain text. So it'll get done with all that, and it sends it back here to where it came in, and then sends it back to Novel Crafter. And I'm, I'm guessing the app that's using Keys to Text Proxy does not have to be Novel Crafter. Anything that wants to talk OpenAI could talk to this. That's the point of the open AI. So let's say it wasn't streaming. It's a big no. So all it does then is it waits for the model to get a big answer together. And then it logs that. And then the same process. It goes back to here and then back to you or Novel Crafter. 
So that was the first module. Now, let's go over here and pretend that what you asked for in one of your requests is OpenAI in one of its models. So let's go to that AI, open AI provider or handler, I should say, make it bigger. I got to get my screen over here going. Uh, done with that. I want this one. Hmm. For some reason. Hmm. 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 Okay, I'm just going to have to read this small print, I guess. So now we've come from Maine, and it's decided based on your request that it needs to run the API, openapi.py, which is a handler for OpenAI and its models. So we start by, like usual, importing all the stuff we need, all this up here, and the libraries, including Fast API again, and Open AI service, which is right here. That's their library. And then we we got to get the key, of course, because at this point you need an API key, an Open AI API key to do anything. So next we we load the open a API key from the environment variables using .env, uh, which ensures secure and flexible configuration management. And it can be either from the uh, exported variables in your environment or a file called .env with the API keys in it. So let's see, async. This is where it got called, I believe. Oh no, this this endpoint, this uh, def here is about going and getting the models. So you can see it goes to OpenAI and does a client models list. So that's the models part. Now we're gonna go down and encounter a few functions that I really don't need to talk about, like uh, word count, okay, and other things. Uh, like extracting the data request, that's pretty complicated because what it's trying to do, in this case, it can kind of pass it through because it's open AI to open AI. But in other cases, all this has to kick in and it has to modify the request so that the backend AI provider can understand it. Let's see, okay, okay. And then you'll see a couple more utility things about the strings, formatting the text. In other words, I'm getting rid of that markdown and all that junk. Log me request. The me means that was what you sent as a request. It's going to clean that up and put that in the text file, which is a history of that particular session using this app. So you can start a whole new conversation by killing, uh, shutting down this app and then restarting it if you want to keep your text files organized. And then the same thing for the AI response. It's going to come back streamed or not streamed, and it's going to handle it. And if there's an error, it's going to try to put that in the response as well so you know what's going on, like a 429, meaning you're coming at it too fast. And that's just more utility for making things look nice. And this first one here that says chat completion JSON, that means that it's a non-stream request. That's all that means. And that'll be followed by the chat completion stream, which is the more typical one. A, a streamed request came in. And that's pretty much it. Uh, let's go see a flow chart for this module here, API underscore open openai.py. Oh boy. So there it is. I mean, it's a little skinny. 
I got these with Mermaid. If you've never used it, it can do these flowchart things just by text. Uh, and Chat GPT and Claude n understand Mermaid kinda, so they can give you the layout, and you just send it to Mermaid for free and get these charts. So it's just reviewing that we get a qu request. Actually, Maine got the request. It's just passing it on. And then we got to get the data out of it so that the AI provider can understand it. We got to log it into the text file. Then we got to decide again if this is streaming or not streaming because both those modules are in this module. So we decide one way or the other. And at the end of that, we log the AI response. If an error occurred, basically we log that. Otherwise, we return. And that is basically it. And I think I included enough for my future self to remember what my past self actually did. So with that, I'm going to go review this. And if it's good enough, I'm going to keep it. And this is not, you know, it's intended for people that code, but basically it's intended for me. So with that, I will say peace.